you've probably seen me pull this stunt before. Yeah, you've probably seen me pull this trick before too. Now, notice the Mac monitor's still on. Weird, right? I mean, how's that even possible? Welcome back to another Mike Giver video. Not long ago, a customer came to us with a bit of an odd request. He didn't just want one USB-C port, he wanted two. Now normally that wouldn't be a big deal, except the USB-C board runs at 12 volts and 3 amp, and that just doesn't pack enough punch if you are maxing out your M4. So what he really needed was a second high-powered USB-C port, but we had to do a little acrobat to get more juice more challenge. So I rigged up a special wire custom job with two input leads. Not exactly something you'll find off the shelf, but it gets the job done. I dropped in a rolled up piece of duct tape, not to fix anything this time, but to catch all the aluminum shavings. Crude? Maybe. Effective? Always. Time to punch a hole in the side of the Mac Mini. Not exactly Apple approved, but then again, neither am I. While I'm making a hole in the side of a perfectly good Mac Mini, let's take a second to talk about staying safe online. This isn't a sponsor spot, just something worth mentioning. When I'm out on a mission, working remotely, hopping on public Wi-Fi, or connecting through random routers, I always use a VPN. A solid VPN like IPVanish can encrypt your internet traffic, hide your IP address, and keep your connection secure no matter where in the world you are. If you're into off-grid setups, traveling, or just value your privacy, check out the link in the description. You'll stay protected, and it helps support the channel. If I save all these shavings, maybe I'll have enough aluminum to recycle into a brand new Mac Mini M5. Now for the first USB-C board. A little heat, a little patience, and a whole lot of hoping I don't bridge anything important.
I'll admit it, this setup's starting to look promising, which usually means something's about to go wrong, but not today. Now it's time to snip off a few of the vent holes. Not exactly how Apple designed it, but I've never been much for following blueprints. Time to whip out the O-Swiss Army knife. Oh wait, we're not in Switzerland. Scratch that. Let's go full American and grab the Leatherman. Gotta make time for the Dremel tool. Nothing says precision like spinning metal at 30,000 RPM. All right, moment of truth. Will she fire up, or did I just void another warranty for nothing? There it is, the beautiful sound of the Mac chime. Never thought a startup tone could feel like victory. All right, time to build the high-powered USB-C box. Everything here's off the shelf, but the wiring? Pure DIY engineering. You know, sometimes drilling a hole is oddly satisfying. Maybe it's the precision, or maybe it's just the chaos I get to control or not. This will be our second high-powered USB-C port. Now, I'll be honest, not my favorite method, but we're out of options. To stick with proper USB-C protocol and still squeeze out real power, we've got to set the input board to 20 volts at 3 amps, that's 60 watts. Then, we step it back down using this buck converter to 12 volts at 5 amps to make it usable while the M4 is under heavy load. It's a bit of a workaround, but hey, it works. All right, all wired up and we've got 12 volts. Always a good sign when nothing sparks and the numbers look right. All right, here goes one last test. Let's see if she sings that sweet startup chime music to a hacker's ears.
And that's it, another one in the books. Somehow, it didn't go up in smoke, which is always a win in my book. If you enjoyed this little experiment in controlled chaos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps keep the soldering iron hot and the projects coming. I'll see you next time. Same tools, different problem, and probably a few more aluminum shavings.